Long before the iconic duo of Misty May Trainer and Kerry Walsh Jennings won their three Olympic gold medals, beach volleyball made its debut on the sands of Waikiki exactly 100 years ago, where games at the Outrigger Canoe Club represented the legitimate birth of the sport. The first king of the beach back in those primitive days was the legendary Duke Kahanamaku, who also introduced the world to surfing and was an Olympic gold medalist swimmer. The Duke was also credited with refining beach volleyball when he came to the mainland in Santa Monica in the 1930s. It went from a leisure pursuit to a more competitive activity. The two-man game gained in popularity and Hollywood legend Buster Crab ruled the beach. Later he would go on to fame as Tarzan, Buck Rogers, and Flash Gordon. In 1944, the first beach tournament took place at Santa Monica's Muscle Beach. It proved to be a popular pursuit. Five years later, at State Beach, 5,000 fans were in attendance to see Manny Sains and Bernie Holtzman win. Beach volleyball continued to grow in the 1950s when top indoor stars like the legendary Gene Selznick, considered the top player in the world, began to take to the sand. Selznick was the father of the modern game, introducing the spike to the sport. Women started to play in this era as well, and mixed doubles tournaments started sprouting up and down the SoCal coast. It was in the 1960s, 50 years ago, when beach volleyball started to resemble what we see today. That decade was marked by some of the greatest rivalries ever, names that have continued to resonate today. The Mikes, Bright and O'Hara, the Rons, Von Hagen and Lang. It was still a time when side-out scoring was used and tourneys took all day and night to complete. Winners receiving a trophy, handshake, and some free beer. It wasn't until seven foot one Laker center Wilt Chamberlain began to play when beach volleyball entered the public's consciousness beyond the shores of Hawaii and Southern California. Wilt was considered the most dominant basketball player of his era and he used the game originally as a way to rehab a torn Achilles tendon that quickly fell in love with the sport and its culture. The 1960s brought the first of the great women's players, Jean Brunicardi and Jeanette Luttrell, but tournaments were few and far between. Finally, in the 1970s, prize money was introduced, and in 1976, the first world championship of beach volleyball was held. The dominant team was Greg Lee and Jim Mangus. They won 13 tournaments in a row over the course of two seasons. The female equivalent? Santa Barbara's Kathy Gregory, who captured 18 of 19 Opens over a three-year span. In the 1980s, events started to spread beyond the confines of California and Hawaii and into Florida and Colorado before blanketing the entire country. The AVP was formed in 1984, which marked the beginning of a golden era. Larger-than-life characters like Sinjin Smith, Randy Stoklos, Tim Hovland, Mike Dodd, and Karch Kirai dominated a circuit that grew to 27 events at its peak in 1988. By the late 1980s, the women had their own tour, the WPVA, with Linda Hanley and Brazilian import Jackie Silva ruling the roost. The biggest game changer for beach volleyball was its inclusion into the Olympic program in Atlanta in 1996. The USA won the gold medal on the men's side with Karai and his partner Kent Steffes. At least one American team has won a gold medal at every games since. In 2000, it was South Bay legend Eric Fenoy Moana and Dane Blanton, a victory that marked an end of an era. One year later, a shorter court and rally scoring created today's brand of volleyball. The team that took greatest advantage of the new rules? Why, Misty and Kerry, who at their height won 89 straight matches, one of the greatest streaks in any sport. California was no longer the only state producing great beach players. The Thin Beast, 2008 Olympic gold medalist Phil Dalhauser, hailed from Florida with a skill set unlike any the sport has ever seen. With beach volleyball and NCAA sport for the first time in 2016, and over 50 college programs across the country fielding teams, the timing is right to honor the true belle of the ball, the queen of the beach.